Now we get into actually manipulating the image. So let's look at this image right here. So this image, um, we can see there was, there was quite a bit of contrast as opposed to an image like this, right, which is lower in contrast. So if we look at this image right here and we look at the histogram, we can see that the histogram does not go across the entire dynamic range. So I don't really have any values here in my highlights and my whites area. Whereas if we take a look at this image right here, I actually do have um, values going all the way across my histogram. So probably the best way I ever heard this uh, explained was, um, gosh, back in like Thunder Lizard days when uh, Michael Ninnis said, what you do is you take your image and you break it up into, um, you, you pretend like it's a mosaic, like every pixel is its own unique mosaic, a little tile, and then, and then you take the mosaic off the wall and you stack all those tiles and your histogram is your piles of tiles. And it totally makes sense that way. Like you take all the black values and the dark values here, well, that's gonna be all of these. And then you go to your, you know, there's like, there's a decent number of black values, shadows, midtones, but then look at all these highlight values right here. Well, the piles of tiles are gonna be higher with your highlight area because there's just more of them. So there's no right or wrong histogram. Your histogram is just a visual representation of your image. It's not intrinsically good or bad if most of your values are on the left or right. If you've photographed a black cat at night, most of your values are gonna be on the left. If you photograph a polar bear in the snow, most of your values are gonna be on the right. Now, you're gonna get, you're gonna be disappointed if you're over or under exposing your image if you overexpose your image and you push your highlights to pure white, then of course you're not gonna get detail in those whites. If you say, well, I never want that to happen, I'm gonna underexpose my image, well, then the values that should be in your midtones are gonna end up in your shadows because you're underexposing. And then if you go into Lightroom and say, well, I'll just fix it in Lightroom, when you lighten the image, in fact, let's go to this flat image right here, when I say, oh, this is underexposed, I need to go in here in my basic panel, and let me tap the R key to put the crop tool away. If I say, all right, I wanna increase the exposure here, as I do that, look what happened to all of the values that were in the shadows, they're now in the midtones. Well, that's good, because the file looks brighter and it looks lighter, but what do you get in your shadows that you don't get in your midtones when you take a picture with a digital camera? You get noise, exactly. So you don't want to underexpose. You don't want to say, well, Julianne told me never to overexpose because then I won't have detail in my highlights. But Julianne did not tell you to underexpose, right? Because people are like, well, I'll just play it safe and underexpose. But then you've got noise because you're going to have to brighten the whole image. You're going to get noise in those shadow areas and bring them up. So we use Lightroom to do creative things to take our photography to the next level, not to fix stuff that we should have done right in camera.